Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris Jones with the World's Worst Fishing. Thanks for tuning in today. We're coming at you again with another uh, soft plastics tutorial. Um, this isn't really going to be a popular colors um, video because what I'm making is just kind of something off the wall. But the reason I'm doing it is because I wanted to show you guys how we do split colors. So, for example, the front half of the bait is one color and then maybe just the tail portion is a completely different color. So a true split color. It's not a laminate where you blend two plastics, but it's actually half and half, so to speak. Um, so that's what we're doing today. We're gonna make a color that I haven't made in a long time. It's called Mean Green. And uh, it's, it's kind of a cool emerald green color with some red in it. And, uh, and we're gonna do that with a red tail. I think it'll look kind of neat. So we're gonna try that but uh, it'll demonstrate how to do it, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, first step, well, I, I always get this wrong, geez. First step is to measure out your plastic. Again, I like to use the one, one measuring cup uh, formula uh, as a control for all my formulas. But uh, we're gonna do some emerald green here. And this is basically the, uh, this is for the body of the worm. So this is what the majority of this color is. It's, I basically mix emerald green with watermelon. So the emerald is, is a real dark, kind of, it has a lot of blue in it. It's real dark turquoise. And then watermelon is obviously a lot lighter green. So we're all familiar with watermelon. So I basically blend those two together. And boy, does it turn out nice. Uh, I, I used to have my baits um, in, in some local tackle shops. You know, I was doing retail for a while. And, um, and one of the local tackle shops, uh, well, not necessarily local, but it was regional. It was up in a town called Albany, Georgia. They had me make a bunch of mean green and they sold a pile of them. So that's what we get. And, uh, and then, like I said, we're gonna do a red tail. So we're just gonna do cherry red. And one thing to keep in mind, when you do red colors, red tends to bleed. So for example, if I have red worms laying in the same tray with blue worms, well, the red's gonna bleed and it's gonna stain the blue, um, you know, so, so it does bleed a lot. You will have um, red stained baits if you let a red worm uh, sit next to uh, any other color. So something to keep in mind, but we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. Like I said, this is just a cherry red, similar to what we used in the red shad. I'm just not using pearl. And um, yeah, so we kind of got Christmas colors going on here. And just real quick, like I do with anything, add a little bit of heat stabilizer. You don't need it a lot for red. Red doesn't really burn very much. Uh, however, this green color will. And so I definitely want to be careful uh, whenever I'm cooking the green plastic. Some colors just seem to burn easier than other others. And I have no idea why. You know, I, I, uh, when I first got into this, you know, I, I talked a lot with the guys up at Spike It Outdoors. I mean, they, they're really the ones behind the scenes. Any plastic company uh, is, is probably using their product. You know, P Pure Fishing Berkeley, uh, you know, Bang Spray, um, Spike It, all those products that we use to enhance our lures, you know, is, is all this company. This is Lure Works by Spike It. So, um, you know, I, I was talking with them a lot and uh, learned a lot about what, this, what these materials really are and uh, how they're made and, um, you know, I don't really know why one color scorches easier than another. But uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get these uh, in the uh, vacuum chamber. We're gonna remove the air, that way they're looking nice and clean, and then we'll go from there. Just got those started. And um, you know, this takes probably, this probably takes about three or four minutes to do this. If you look right there, you see the needle. This measures in pounds of mercury. Um, 
Now I'm not, you know, that educated on it, but when it gets to minus 30 all the way down here, that means there is no air in this entire thing, which includes the plastic. Um, so I've gone over this a couple times in some videos, but um, yeah, you know, you basically just watch the gauge and whenever it gets down there, you're pretty much done and uh, you shouldn't really have too many problems with air. All right, we're gonna do this again, three minutes as usual. And that should, uh, that should come out nice. Not overcooked, but not undercooked. When it's undercooked, plastic is real sticky and um, it's, it, it, it's real gummy. It's real gummy and sticky, and if you shoot the molds with it, it's not going to turn out. It is actually disgusting. It sticks to your fingers. You really can't get it off. Um, it doesn't come out, you know, like it, it won't clean out of the Pyrex very easily. It's, it's really sticky, so um, you definitely do not want to undercook the plastic. Um, it's arguably more aggravating than when you overcook it. But we're going to go ahead and let this finish, and then we're going to uh, show you how we do split tails. All right. So basically, whatever the ta whatever color you want the tail, you do that first. So we're gonna go ahead and draw off our plastic. Just for kicks, we're just gonna kinda do a little variety of things here. Let me get the camera over here. Uh, so some swim baits. Some swim baits. Here's our seven inch ribbon tail worm. Here's our uh, fluke. We're gonna do some crawls. You know what, I ran out of plastic, hold on. Get out, get some more plastic in the ejector real quick. Okay, now we'll fill up the, uh, the, the crawls, the punch bug molds here. And you don't need to worry about trying to fill up the sprue holes, uh, you know, to, to make sure that, um, you know, to make sure that they don't suck in too much and then create air pockets right in the nose of the bait. You're only worried about the tail portion filling up. And then basically we're going to remove the baits from the molds, but just leave the tail portions in the mold. And, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the uh, swim bait mold, and this is a really tricky mold to do this because you can see this tails stick up vertically, um, so it's hard to close the mold back on top of it. But basically, I'm just going to clip off the red tails. Just clip those parts. And I'm gonna remove the rest of the bait. That's literally all we're doing. And then I'm just gonna leave the tails in there. So for these, I need to kinda oil this up a little bit so that they'll go back down in there. These are, like I said, a little tricky. Now the rest of the molds are, are more horizontal and so it's really not a problem. But we're gonna go ahead and close this one up and then we're gonna go to the next mold. Okay, now here's our seven inch worm mold. As you can see, doing these split colors is kind of a pain in the butt. You know, that's why I charge like five and a half, six dollars a bag, because there's just a lot of labor. You know, it's not hard, uh, you know, but by the time you snip off all these tails and you do this for, you know, 30, 40, 50 worms worth, um, it gets a little, it's a little time consuming and, and tedious, you know, I mean, everything has to fit back together perfectly, but uh, you know, you really do get a cool effect. So we're gonna go ahead and get these back together and, uh, and then, then we'll probably go ahead and shoot the, uh, the other half. Okay, so now we have the green side, and we're gonna put some uh, 0.35 millimeter red flake in it uh, because it really makes it look cool, and that's really what mean green is supposed to be. So we're gonna add that there. 
Then we're just gonna kind of stir it up just by swirling it around. And, uh, and that's kind of what you get. Okay, and now all you do is you just fill it up with the body color, in this case, our mean green. And I like to shoot this a little hotter than I normally would. That way it really vulcanizes and fuses with the red tail uh, that you left in the mold. So I really wanna hold some hard pressure to really get the two plastics to kind of melt back together. And that's really the trick. You know, you, you shoot the tail color, you leave it in the mold, and that just, you know, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. And, uh, and then you just basically fill it in with the other color. And um, you know, that's how, that's how somebody like me that uses hand injection, um, that's how we get the split, the split color effect. Now, you know, the larger companies, Berkeley, Zoom, um, you know, uh, Gambler, all the, all, all, the, all the really big manufacturers, they have these humongous injection machines. And uh, they actually have a mold that has two ports, you know, one on the end, one up at the front of the bait. And so they actually shoot both streams in together. And, um, you know, they're, they're actually two color injection molds which I can get those made for hand injection and then just shoot the back and shoot the front um, they're just really expensive and I can just do it this way but um, we're gonna go ahead and fill that last mold and then we'll see what the results are okay let's take a look at the boom shad see if we got anything that turned out decent here all right There it is. Not too bad. We'll uh, we'll get we'll get some better light on these in a few moments. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, and show you what the other ones look like. And there you go. Nice split color. Candy cane juniors. So that's our mean green with a red tail. Okay, so here it is. This is how split colors are made. And uh, boy, the, the fluke really looks cool, doesn't it? With that fork tail just being just a completely different color. I don't know, I love that effect. But uh, yeah, the, the boom shads actually turned out. Uh, that mold, like I said, is a little tricky, but um, you know, I, I think it's a cool effect whenever you have a split tail or split claws. You can see the claws on the craw there are different colors. But um, yeah, you know, this is not necessarily, um, you know, a color that I would want to throw all the time. But the reason I did it is just for the contrast, uh, you know, just so that it would show two different colors really well uh, on camera, um, you know, just kind of makes a good example of it but um you know i mean obviously i can you know do a little bit more practical things like june bug body with blue tail or you know some sort of a watermelon body you know with 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 a blue tail or black body blue tail things like that <clears throat> um stuff you've probably seen before but something different and um yeah i mean that's how it's done it's definitely a labor of love when when you sit there and have to clip off all the little appendages and the molds and uh, try to get the molds to shut again properly. Um, it's not the funnest thing in the world, but you get really cool effects, and uh, that's what it's all about. Well, thanks for watching today's uh, Soft Plastics episode. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, maybe you learned something. Uh, if you're interested in some split tails, just uh, shoot a comment down below or send me an email, worldsworstfishing at gmail.com. If you have any questions about uh, how to make plastics of your own or if you're just getting started, also shoot me a comment down below or give me an email or uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to talk plastics and fishing with you all day. But um, anyway, uh, ho hope you enjoyed the program today and uh, we'll definitely see you next time on the World's Worst Fishing. Thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, thanks for watching the World's Worst Fishing. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please give us a comment down below. Tell us what you think. And also hit that like and subscribe button.